So let's go ahead and duplicate another one of these. And we're going to grab these two, duplicate, and call this one here, six underscore texture, six underscore texture. Okay, that is great. So let's go ahead and open this one up, and it'll fire open in monitor develop. Let's start from scratch. Okay. Right, so let's start with our shader tab. And once again, unity cookie slash slash beginner slash uh, we'll call this one here six and uh, six dash texture map. Great. All right, so let's add in some properties. Now I'm going to be using the rim color one. Um, I'm doing this for a reason because I'm going to show you what happens when we overload our shader, provided that hasn't been updated and fixed as well. All right, color tint. Now we're going to call this color tint this time because we have a texture and it's not going to be the only te the only color in the model. All right. So the next one's going to be main text. Oops, use this one here. I'm going to call it. Diffuse texture. We'll get into um, gloss map and normal mapping a little bit later. Type is going to be 2D equals white, and this is a function, not a um, not an input. So to have those little curly brackets, put anything in those curly brackets, but you have to have them there. Get color equals 1.0, 1 1.0, 1.0. Right, next one up, shininess. Okay, so this one here, it's going to be a float equals 10. Next up, we're going to have room color, and let's go room color equals. One, 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 and power, and power. Very repetitive this. Hopefully I can, by repeating this so many times, I can get this into your muscle memory so that you can just type it whenever you want. Right, so that's all of our properties done. What's next is we need to have a sub shader. And while I'm at it, add in a fallback, be killer. Okay, start off of our tags. Actually no, we need to have a pass before we have tags. Tags can actually go outside your pass, but um, usually it's better to have it in it. A uh, little light mode equals forward. All right, let's enter some CG program code. Pragma, vertex, vert, pragma, fragment, frag, and let's go user defined variables. And in here, we're going to have uniform, float for, uh, let's start with color, uniform, float for the color, uniform, float for room color. Just getting grouped. Uh, we want to have uniform, float, and let's see if I four, uniform, Float, shininess, uniform, float, and this one here is going to be go rim power, and we need to go uniform sampler 2D. Now, there's several by the way, you can have a 1D, you can have 2D, you can have a 3D, um, oh, and the other one is cube, cube maps. But we're just going to be dealing with sampler 2D for now. The 1D and the 3D, uh, you probably won't see them at all in um, Unity. I don't think I've ever used them. Uh, I think I used the 1D once. Anyways, we want to go main text and then we want to go uniform float for main text underscore st for our transformations. I might actually just keep this consistent uh, put that at the top float 4 not float 3. Great unity defined variables and this is of course just uniform float for underscore light color 0. Alright base put structs so we're going to create the struct vertex input and we'll go create the struct vertex output. The input we're going to have float for vertex, the semantic of position, float uh, three normal, and then there's normals, and then a new one we're going to have float for text code, text code zero. All right, that's great. Let's go float for pulse, SV position, and we're going to have float for text, text code. Zero, float for Oz world, it's called one, float three, normal dir, it's called three, oh, uh, two, sorry, I think, two, yes. Don't worry that it's not pink, it will still work. Alright, vertex function. Alright, so our vertex function is quite straightforward. Vertex output, we're going to assign to vertex output, vert as a function, vertex input as a base, and we're going to use it as v, so we can access it. We're going to Anything we write to, um, to O is going to be write, written to um, vertex output O dot pos. What's world is going to be equal or object to world B dot vertex O dot normal dir. This one here we're going to normalize, and in here we're going to multiply a float for, and it's going to be V dot normal zero dot zero. Multiply this one with the world object. And of course, we're going to take this float 4 and we're going to only take the XYZ component for the normal direction. Oh, equals mole 
unity matrix MVP. Modify that by the V dot vertex. A uh, new line, we're going to have O dot text equals V dot text code. And finally, let's return O. Okay, so let's get into the fragment function. All right, so float for frag. So frag is a function. Vertex output I. The semantic color. And there is our function. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to start off with our lighting, of course. It's going to be normalize i dot normal der. Actually, we've already normalized this, so i dot normal der. All right. Put it three view direction. This one we can normalize, and in here we want to have world space camera pulls dot x y z, uh, and we're going to subtract from this i dot pulls world. Let's go to our float three light direction and float 10 and then we'll go ahead and go if the world light 0 .w equals 0, 0 else this one here it's going to be the directional light so I wasn't going to do this was I? oh well it's alright we can um, add in multiple lights and stuff into the shade as well light direction is going to be normalize the world space light pulse 0 dot x y z Else, we'll go float 3 fragment to light source equals float 3. And we don't need to float 3. Old habits die hard. Other space light pulse dot xyz. Subtract from that the i dot pulse world dot xyz. Alright, that's fantastic. Let's go float distance equals length. Gonna grab the length of fragment to light source. 10 equals 1.0 divided by distance. All right, and light direction is going to be normalize the fragment to the light source. Cool. I, think I might have to, in some of the future ones, I might um, not write these from scratch. This would be very big. All right. So we're going to have float 3 diffuse lighting, and it's going to be attenuation times light color 0 dot xyz times saturate remember saturate truncates off the um, anything less than 0 and greater than 1 the dot product of the normal, normal direction and the light direction for 3 specular was the attenuation times the light color o dot xyz and times this so we can basically just go so let's let's cut this out what we're going to do is we're going to go diffuse reflection so we're going to just, because we have to grab all that anyways, we're just going to multiply it by our specular coefficient. So we're going to times this by underscore spec color dot xyz times power. And it's going to be taken to the power of shininess. shininess. And we're going to take the saturated, um, it's going to be reflect. Uh, no, there's actually a dot product in there somewhere. We need a dot of the reflect. I think I've got this right. Alright, so we're going to reflect the light direction across the normal direction and then we're going to dot product the that reflected vector by the view direction and then take all of that to the power of shininess and I'm pretty sure that is the spectral reflection. If something goes wrong, it's the first place I'm looking. Okay, so let's take some rim lighting into this. Half rim, actually, let's just use a float for now, keep this consistent. I have a lot of habits for our uh, Shader writing, so I apologize if I do something that I haven't taught yet. So we're going to saturate the dot product of the normalized view direction. View direction is already normalized. No point normalizing it twice. Okay, so dot product of the view direction by the normal direction. So that's the mask, and then we calculate the lighting from that by going float three rim lighting to saturate. Uh, what were we saturating? This is going to be the dot product of there's an n dot l times color, I think. All right, normal direction, light direction. So we're going to saturate uh, the dot product of that. Multiply this by room color dot x y z times that by the light color dot x y z times that by the room or the power. I mean power 
and we're going to take the power of room to the room power. Alright, float 3 light final equals unity light model ambient dot fuzzy plus diffuse reflection plus specular reflection plus rim lighting and now if we get into the cool stuff all right so hopefully i've drilled in all of that lighting information enough for you guys probably not not much point me rewriting that in the future videos before we get into this i'll just go through this one last time okay, we've got the properties um anything we need to have in the shader make sure we have our light mode as forward base our sampler 2d our main text float 4 main text st so we can get those coordinates uh let's see what else was new got the text coordinates um, yeah, I think I've explained this enough times. Let's just go ahead and crack on with the textures. Texture maps. Alright, float 4, text equals text 2D. And we're going to have main text. And then we have the coordinates. So we have our texture and the coordinates. So this is effectively the unwrap function. And what we have is we have i.text.xy. This is the coordinates. But what we need to do is we need to multiply this by underscore main text underscore st dot xy so that will multiply it by the scaling then we add in the underscore main text underscore st dot zw and finally what we'll do is we'll return a float for and it's going to be text dot xyz times light final times uh, color dot xyz comma 1.0 Alright, so let's take a look at this and see whether this is broken or not. And it has, of course. Undefined variable underscore light color, or space light poles, or space light poles, and declare identify. Saturate error. Alright, so the error is actually at line 81. So if we come through here, saturate. Um, I like to debug by just creating in some extra spaces, and it makes it easier to see uh, where our sign's are going. Okay, so we have here light color, and yes, we light color zero. Alright, so it's still looking for world space light pause. So, um, world space light pause actually has a zero next to it. If I do that, there we go. Alright, so we have one warning left here. Um, I'm going to look into this warning in a moment, but first we want to go ahead and um, assign this. So, let's go assign text map. And you see, we now have a slot for textures, so I'm just going to load up some textures. Um, I just have a wood rough texture here. Alright, so just to show you how it's working, and it is working fine. So we've got all those settings here, we have like our rim lighting effect, we have shininess, so we can adjust that specular highlight. And you can always put in controls to make these brighter or brighter or not. And yeah, that's a texture. Cool, alright. So something I mentioned a little earlier in the series was that um, we want our ambient lighting in our light, not before our, or not after our texture. Now the reason for this is, if I can get this to work, we have our lighting added, our uh, ambient light. So if I just cut this one here out, if we calculate this, all this stuff in here, plus if we add in our lighting, our ambient light there, you notice how it's just grey on the back. So that's the importance of why we need to have our ambient lighting in our lighting before our textures are applied. Okay, and there we go. Alright, so this warning, this is something that I want to briefly touch on. Our surface here cannot compile for Flash, and we're going to get this warning. Now, if you're compiling for Flash, then uh, this could be a bit of a problem. It means that you have to do something like remove rim lighting, um, or remove something that you can. Now, there are a number of ways we can remove this. I, um, even just you know fixing up this to not have if and else, removing rim lighting would work. There's a lot of different things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, because we're going to be talking about how we can optimize our shaders you know, for Flash or whatever later, because this is we're not working on Flash, we're working just on PC at the moment. We, I'm going to show you how to, how to exclude a render. We do this with the hash, pragma, exclude renders Flash. If we reload that now, the error goes away, which is great. All right, so that's how you can just hide warnings. Um, if you're getting warnings like that, you can just exclude a renderer. If you find that it is on, if your shader won't compile because it's too big, it needs needs to be upgraded to shader model 3, then 
we'll be talking about that a little bit later on. But for now, that is it. So I'm just going to finish this off by taking this pass, copying it, and pasting it in again. I'm just going to take this one and call it Ford Add. I wasn't going to do this, but we might as well now. <laughs> and it does allow me to show you something else. Um, when we come down here, what we want to do is we want to take out the texture and we want to take out the ambient lighting. So if I just leave this in, you can see how we get some weird effects here um, where ambient lighting is being duplicated for every single light. So um, let's just delete all but one of these. That one to this one. Delete. Okay, so what we want to do is in here we want to have light color, uh, light final and remove the Unity ambient light. Cool, and that there is now, you know, it's not blowing out over there, it's not too bright in the dark areas. That's fantastic. Alright, so that is it. I hope you guys have learnt something through here. I hope this hasn't been too long. I'm trying not to go too fast. I'm trying to re-explain things as much as possible. I know shader writing has such a steep learning curve that um, you really do need to do the basics over and over and over again until they stick in your mind. That's it for now. Let's stay tuned for the next one where we will be taking our shader and making it more awesome. Um, I believe the next one is working with normal maps, which is really difficult, but also really cool.